Hi, Linda Davis, Inner Harbor Acupuncture, talking today about using smokeless moxipoles. So here's one that I've already gotten started, but this is what they look like. It's a charcoalized version of a smoky moxipole. Your acupuncturist or a similar practitioner may have suggested that you use one at home. They're very convenient. So I'm just reviewing some cautions, precautions, and how-tos so you can be safe and effective when you use your smokeless moxipole. First of all, watch your loose clothing. We're working with fire here. So I'm taking off my scarf. My sleeves are up. I don't have any loose uh, hanging things that could catch fire. And I'm not going to be around my face. Uh, so you don't want to use this moxipole around the face and mucous membranes. Uh, most importantly, you don't want to burn yourself or burn anyone else. That goes uh, not without saying. We have to say that. Uh, don't use a smoky, smokeless moxipole with fever or heat conditions. It's too much heat. Um, don't use around the face. Don't use in hypertension situations, especially uncontrolled hypertension situations. In pregnancy, you are not going to use the smokeless moxipole around the abdomen or the low back. Stay away from those areas. Don't use this item over large blood vessels. You don't want to cook your blood. That's not a good idea. And if you're working with someone else, Stay in communication about how it feels. Oh, I also want to mention uh, a lot of caution in uh, situations of neuropathy and impaired sensory abilities. So if someone can't feel how that heat is feeling, you might want to not do that. Or be very, very careful about monitoring the uh, area with your free hand. Um, you're looking for mild heat, a gentle pink, comfortable heat. Uh, so we're thinking about marshmallows. Oh, well, I'm thinking about marshmallows. Uh, this is not the school of marsh toasting marshmallows that goes in hard and fast. We want to have the equivalent of lightly toasted and gooey all the way through. You want the heat to sink in. So things you want to have on hand. Um, a light source. So I'm going to show you both using a lighter like this and using a candle. Uh, a very important piece of equipment is a little container. Uh, this is handy to have. You, you can use a cup. This is a little um, votive holder and I've got it filled with ash and sand. You can fill yours with either both of those. You can use fine salt. All these things work and we're going to use this container to uh, knock the ash from the live ember and also to extinguish the um, moxipole at the end. So we've got these things on hand and maybe have some water on hand just in case. I'd like to say if you're going to set something on fire, you should have some water nearby. So we're going to look at how to light the moxipoles. The moxipoles are charcoalized version of smoky moxipoles. So you're going to be lighting this. It's like lighting a charcoal briquette. Uh, I'm going to start with the lighter. It takes a while. Uh, you'll see that I've got my thumb away from that little wheel. That little wheel gets hot if you hold this down for a prolonged time. But I just hold the moxipole at the tip of that flame and I'm slowly rotating the moxipole and I'm looking to see that there's some ash buildup on the pole because that will tell me that the ember is starting to light. You can also 
Bring your hand in close by and you'll feel the heat radiating off. I just want to show you as I continue to light this moxipole. So uh, I think you can see that it's a little bit lit. I want to go a little bit more. I'm going to use a candle and continue to light this and turn it, you kind of, you're monitoring, you're watching where it's lit up and we're getting there. But as you can see, it may be convenient to use a candle because it's a long time to hold a lighter open. And I think I've got enough of an ember here to get started. Put out the light, put out the candle. Blow on this a little bit. And you can see it's really starting to get going. So once it's really going, you can hold it up on the area that you want to heat. Now you can see I am not holding it really close. I am holding it so that I can feel a comfortable warmth. And another thing you might notice is that I'm moving the moxipole slowly. So you don't come and just hold it at one area. You can do what they call the sparrow pecking method. If you want to work on a very tight area, you come close and then pull away. So you're letting the heat come in gently and kind of soak through into the local area. So you may notice that I'm starting to get, oh, you can't see that there, I'm starting to get some ash build up. And that can actually cut down on the amount of heat that's coming out. So I've got my little container here and I'm knocking off, brushing off the ash from the tip. You might be tempted to tap it, don't. Brush, just brush it off like that. Uh, another thing you want to know, inspect your moxipole before you use it. If there's any cracks, don't use it. It may not be, uh, it may not hold together. Uh, so you don't want to um, have a dangerous situation. So we're looking for gentle pink in the area a comfortable warmth. Follow your instructions from your practitioner. So when we're done, we want to extinguish the moxipole. But we're not going to dip it into the water because that's not the way to do it. What we're going to do is extinguish it by burying it in this ash, salt, or sand that's going to cut off the oxygen so that the ember goes out. And I'm just going to hold this for a little while while I talk. You're going to leave it in here for a good 5-10 minutes. I'd say after about 10 minutes you can double check. You can pull it out and hold it next to your hand to see if there's any heat coming off. And this is actually a good place to store your moxipole. You can just leave it sitting in there. You want to make sure that it's buried deep enough so that it doesn't fall out uh, because it will continue to burn. I'm holding this. My um, material inside has gotten a little compacted and um, since this is a new pole and it's longer, um, it's not going to go down deep enough to, to hold that. Um, yeah, so that's mostly it. Storage, as I said, you can store it here. Um, I also store my smokeless moxipoles in a little tin foil fold-up envelope. That's tidy and safe. So I'd like you to be all tidy and safe using your smokeless moxipole. And thanks for watching. Linda Davis, Inner Harbor Acupuncture.